This week, Fishing the West with host Larry Schoenborn takes you to Oregon's Upper Clackamas River, 25 miles southeast of Portland. Headwatering in the Cascade Mountains between Mount Hood and Mount Jefferson, the Clackamas winds through a rugged, timbered valley before joining the Willamette River. Site of Oregon's first fish hatchery in 1876, its prolific fisheries, easy access, and proximity to Portland have long attracted sportsmen. Although dam construction in 1911 severely blocked upriver access, the Clackamas today provides year-round salmon and steelhead angling, including acrobatic summer run action. We'll be fishing today with lure designer and jig expert Jim Bradbury. Jim lives on the Eagle Creek tributary and has fished the upper Clackamas the past 10 years, pioneering his jig and bobber approach for steelhead. Today he'll be coaching Larry on the finer points of rod, line, and lure control while sharing some of his favorite holds above North Fork Reservoir. And with these two Clackamas residents teaming up, it's quite an eye-opening lesson on low water steelheading. The Clackamas River, which begins up in Oregon's Cascade Mountains, runs into the Willamette River just south of Portland. The Clackamas was the site of Oregon's first fish hatchery, but in 1911, River Mill Dam blocked many miles of prime spawning grounds. With hatchery programs very active, the river expects runs of winter and summer steelhead, as well as spring Chinook salmon and coho. Today, Larry will be fishing with Jim Bradbury, who is considered one of the premier bobber and jig fishermen. The Bradbury jig is still around and still very popular, and Jim was the man to talk to about this technique. He and Larry will be fishing the upper Clackamas above the dams, where summer steelhead were trucked up to premier spawning grounds. That practice has been halted, and there are no longer summer fish trucked up to the upper river. Let's join Jim and Larry on the Clackamas River in Oregon on Fishing the West. Crystal clear, so I'm going to use purple. I'm going to say if the water was a little bit higher and a little bit dirty, I would use black at this time of year. A little bit of pink in it? Yeah. That's so they um, see it better? Well, I uh, like uh, everything two-tone. Everything you see in the water, minnows, frogs, crawdads, whatever, everything is two-tone. So they're used to seeing them that way, and that's the way I time them. Mm. Today, there are jigs from many manufacturers, some big, some small garage operations, but there is certainly no shortage of sizes, shapes, and colors. There are painted heads, painted heads with eyes, some painted eyes, some little metal beads. Material is unlimited with Mirabu being one of the more popular because of the way it moves underwater. Okay, now to rig this thing up, we're just going to slide the bobber up the line two feet deep because the water's four feet and the fish are always looking up, so we're going to fish above their heads. We don't, we don't try to hit them on the nose. That seems pretty short, but that's the, that's the trick, huh? That's the trick to this. I don't like to lose them. I'm not pretty cheapskate. So what did you do? We would take a match or a toothpick, whatever it takes to piss the hole, because all the bobbers ain't the same size hole on the bottom. And we'll slide up the line two feet from the jig, and we'll just take and wrap the line around the toothpick three or four times, and then poke it inside the bobber, and it'll maintain that depth. It won't move. Well, why don't you go ahead here and show me how. OK, I'll show you how she works. The rods of choice for jig with bobbers or jigs with floats, as some prefer to call them, are longer. Okay, now, once that hits the water, you got to keep your line up, keep your rod tip up, and keep reeling the line. And it'll surprise you how fast this comes down the river at you. Lamaglass offers a nine and a half foot model in both spinning and bait casting, and is designed specifically for this type of fishery. Jim mentions dead drift and swing. Both are good techniques, but the longer rod allows you to mend your line and keep the float or bobber going down the slot where the fish are laying. You can't reel so fast that you reel it downstream, but you have to keep up enough slack so when the bobber go, fish takes it and the bobber goes down, you can set the hook. Yeah. You make a couple quick cranks and set the hook. Well, I fish with these bigger floats with uh, eggs and shrimp, you know, with bait. You want a natural drift? You want it coming just real natural? It's got to go exactly what the stream flow is. If you reel it and it's going faster than what the river's flowing, you will not hit it. Longer rods, of course, offer longer casts and the ability to mend line. I fish with flies with a strike indicator. This is basically what this amounts you know, to. And, and uh, boy, you want it right with the current. Yeah, this is what it amounts to. A wave streamer with a strike indicator is about what it amounts to. Now below you, you just feed line and let it. Now if I wanted to go further downstream, I could just open the bale and let it float on down the river. You just don't see many of the large yellow floats these days, with anglers having many choices of bobbers or floats. The Phil TurboMaster 3 is among the most popular on the Clackamas because of its ease of use and no toothpicks needed. It's easily adjusted to suit different depths. Bobbers also come in many different colors, sizes, and shapes. It's important to be able to see your bobber at all times. Bobber down almost always means you have a fish on, and if you can't see the bobber, you'll miss your chance. As long as I can see the bobber floating, I'm all right. When the bobber goes down is when you got to worry. 
<laughs> it could be a fish, could be a rock. Uh, chance on being a rock ain't too much, but. Uh, Hey, Larry, don't look like they want my purple and pink. You have to run your red and yellow through oh, there. Okay, look out. I was ready. Start, start out by casting straight upstream. All right. If you're lining up off the water, just keep up your slack, but don't reel downstream. Where are you, Float? There you are. Just on the edge of the current. Yeah, that's right where they are. See, they kind of hold out of the main current, get behind something where there's a little less current, and they can dart over and grab something if they want it. You're in the right spot. Now I can get it to go behind that rock, couldn't I? Yeah, there you go. Now it'll go behind there. Open your bail and feet out a little line. There you go. Come on, fish, run out and grab it. Come on, fish, it's your turn. Nope, don't look like he's there. Start. Okay, now go ahead and let her swing. Just hold your rod tip to the water. Okay. The current will catch on the belly of your line and suck that right over to the bank for you. That's worth a try, huh? It's worth a try. Sometimes they'll uh, think it's a minnow or something swimming alongside the bank and I've only seen it two or three times in all the times I've been fishing, but I've seen a bump coming across the water coming over to take that. Yeah, on a very long hole, what I'll do is I'll fish half of it by casting from the bottom up. They all get to see it dead drift, they all get to see it swing, then I'll move it halfway up through the hole, yeah. and do the same thing, then they all get to see it dead drift, and they all get to see it swing. So they all get to see the fly in two different <laughs> ways, and uh, sometimes they hit it better on a swing, and sometimes they want it better on dead drift. Well, that, that's enough for this one? That's enough for this one. Let's go find one where fishing is willing. All right. Be careful these oh, rocks. That's gonna be gonna be fun, Jim. Great place for them. Wish they knew about it. Hey, there fish! You, go. you got a fish finally! Ha <laughs> ha! Finally! Nice jumper! <laughs> finally! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they can jump, huh? <laughs> yeah. You're doing a good job. <laughs> I thought there looked like some real heavy water in the That looked like there, a good it? spot, eh? Yeah. That last cast worked, huh? The last cast. It normally does the job. Last cast. He was right out there in front of us all the time. Yeah, he was right, only right up there. 25 feet away. Yeah. Well, they're spectacular fish, aren't they, huh? Oh, I love them. This time of the year, they're really active. Because Woo! we're fishing in shallow water, they usually come up because they can't go down. There ain't enough room to go down, so up they come. Yeah. It's a nice looking male. You know, actually this time of the year, these fish are better eaten than uh, when they come in in the spring. When they come in the spring, they got more body fat inside their meat. They, they do have, they're really fat like a spring snook. Six, seven months later, all that body fat is out of them and you got nice dry flaky meat. When do you think this fish came in? This fish probably came in, uh, June? That's when I'm used to fishing up in this area, June, maybe July. That early? I haven't fished that this late up here. Well, normally I don't start into the upper Clackamas above North Fork Reservoir until uh, 4th of July. Okay, I think he's just about tuckered, Jim. Do you want to... Getting close. Get him? Where should I bring him to? Right okay, here? Okay, we got a nice calm hole just slightly down here from us. Just a rainbow trout that went to, went to salt. You about ready, fish? Yeah. Yes, that ocean does wonders for rainbow trout, doesn't it? There we go. You did a good job there. <laughs> but see how we can pick it up? Hooked yes. right through the end of the nose. Just a little blush of pink up here. A little red stripe. We're going to turn it loose. Okay. Let somebody else catch it. Sure. Well, you catch and release almost all of them, don't you, Jim? Yeah, it's, uh, there's enough fish up here that you can catch them off enough with this technique that uh, if you want one deep, you just come up and catch it whenever you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you gotta get her to lay down. Shake her back and forth until she gets breathing and she'll take off. You ready to go, lady? Or she sure fought well. There she goes. Good job, gal. Thank you, sir. Hang on. <laughs> Rock, guy, <not> slipper. <laughs>